Hello, Curran here. This video is about making a scatter plot with D3 and SVG. This video is for people who want to learn about how to make a scatter plot, but also who've followed along with these previous videos where we created a bar chart and customized the axes. Let's start by forking this visualization that we made in the customizing axes video. I'm going to click fork right here. And then I'll change the title to scatter plot. The thing that makes scatter plots fundamentally different from bar charts is that they don't use bars, but they use circles instead. So let's convert this into, you know, a visualization that shows the same data, but instead of using bars, we use circles. The circles can go here at the end of where the bars would be. So in index.js, let's take a look at where our rectangles are being created. Here it is down here. Make this a little bit bigger. So this is where we need to modify. I'm just going to change rect to circle in the select all and also in the append. And now we're left with, OK, we're not seeing anything because width and height, it doesn't make sense for circles. Instead of setting width to be the output from the x scale, we can set x to be that number. And instead of setting height, we can set r, the radius of the circles. And oops, circles don't take as input x and y. They take as input cx and cy. So if I add a c in front of these, we can see that they get positioned. See that? Sweet. The circles are overlapping here because we set the radius, not the diameter, to the bandwidth. But if we set the diameter by saying y scale.bandwidth divided by 2, then the circles don't overlap anymore. The problem here, though, is they're not aligned. See, the circle, I mean, I think the center of the circle should match with the center of the label. And this is because we're using a band scale and you know, this position would be the edge of a bar in a bar chart. But we really what we want is the center of the bar vertically. To deal with this, we can add y scale dot bandwidth divided by 2 to our y coordinate by saying, OK, cy is the y scale of the y value of d plus y scale dot bandwidth divided by 2 that gets our circles aligned properly. But you know, we're using a band scale here and band scales are really designed for bar charts. But if we just want the center point, we can use a scale where we don't need to manually compute the center. And that type of scale is scale point. So instead of importing scale band here, we can import scale point. And then when we construct the y scale, we can say scale point instead of scale band. Then when we make our circles, one thing that's problematic is we don't have bandwidth available anymore on the y scale. Point scales don't have bandwidth. So it's the, our code is breaking because you know we can't reference bandwidth. And so here for the radius, let's just set a fixed value like maybe 10. All right, now we've got these center aligned circles without doing any special computation, dividing by two and stuff. But these are a bit small. I think I'll just set the radius to be, I don't know, 20. There is one problem here that they're going all the way up against the edge. See that the circle is overlapping with the label there? I think we can solve this by modifying the scale to have more padding. There we go. If I change padding to 0 0.5 here, that gets rid of that problem. I think I'll use, I don't know, 0 0.7. But now our circles are overlapping again, so I'm going to change the radius back down to maybe 18. There we go. And we lost our nice blue color. Where was that? In styles.css? Yeah, here it is. The rects are being set to be steel blue but there are no rects. So let's change this selector to circle. 
Yeah, now we've got these steel blue circles. And one last thing, you know, it's kind of hard to correlate these labels here with these circles that are so far away. So why don't we add these grid lines going across like we did for the bottom ones. Over in index.js, we can do this when we define the y-axis. And this is currently still in line right here. I'm going to extract this to a variable. So instead of putting it right there, I'm going to cut that and say, OK, that's going to be y-axis. And then we can say const y-axis equals, and then I'll paste that right there. Now we have space to attach this dot tick size. So on a new line, I'll say dot tick size is, well, it should not be negative. It should be positive. Or maybe, maybe it should be negative. Wait a minute. Oh, what's going on here is we, we added some code to remove these lines. Yeah, that's right here. We're selecting all the domain path and the tick lines. So let's bring back those tick lines by deleting this part right here. All right, there they are. But they're only going over halfway because we're using inner height, whereas we should be using inner width. All right, we've pretty much made a scatter plot. One thing that bugs me a little bit is how this grid isn't like nicely closed off here. There's a feature of D3 scales where we can uh, nice them. That's a term that means, you know, make it so that the ticks end, or rather that the scale domain ends on a tick. And we want to set that up on the X scale. We can do that by, after setting the domain and range, we can just say dot nice. Yeah, see that? Now we got this nice crisp edge here. Goes up to 1.6 billion. All right, we've created a scatter plot where X encodes a quantitative attribute, but Y actually encodes an ordered attribute. That's what scale point is for. This is not really, you know, standard scatter plot material. Let's make a you know, standard scatter plot where X and Y both represent quantitative attributes. But this is kind of cool, so I'm going to leave this the way it is, and I'm going to fork this one, and I'm going to rename it to cars scatter plot because we're going to load in the cars data set. In a previous video, I made this auto MPG summary program, and what this does is it loads the auto MPG data set from this URL here. So I'm going to copy this URL and load this same data set into our scatter plot. So back in our scatter plot, um, I'm actually going to delete this local data.csv because we're not going to use that anymore. And over in index.js, the place where we're loading the data, I'm going to paste this URL right here. Oops, I've got some extra quotes there. And I'm just going to put this dot then on a new line so we don't have a very long line of code. All right, now we sort of have to go back to the drawing board because our parsing doesn't make sense anymore. You know, there is no D dot population, and we don't need to multiply that by a thousand. I'm going to go back and look at that data table summary because this JSON representation gives us a nice sense of what we need to parse. So actually, I'm just going to copy that text into our code right here, and it's going to be broken for a little while. But I'm going to use this to see what needs to be parsed as numbers. We need to parse mpg as a number, and then I'm just going to copy-paste this line a bunch of times and then modify it. So for example, cylinders needs to also be parsed as a number and so on for displacement, horsepower, weight, and acceleration. And year, I mean, we could parse it as a date, but I think it's just as convenient to parse it as an integer 
for our scatterplot purposes. Origin and name we do not need to parse as a number. And since we're just mutating each row, those are still going to be there on our D objects as strings. So that's how we can parse the cars data set. So how should we visualize this? I mean, what should be X and Y? I think we can just try a few things. So I'm going to paste this code here and just comment it out. Our accessor functions still make sense with the old data. So let's set these to be two quantitative attributes like the number of cylinders and maybe the horsepower. And what's happening here is we're using a point scale which doesn't make sense with quantitative attributes. We need to change that to use uh, scale linear. So I'm going to remove scale point from our imports and then down when we create the Y scale I'm going to use scale linear. And also with scatter plots, it doesn't necessarily make sense to have a zero baseline. So what I'm going to do is say, instead of using zero as the starting point for our X scale domain, I'm going to copy paste that max logic and change max to min. But you know what? D3 actually has a function that will give you this exact thing, you know, going from the min to the max, and that's called extent. So I can change this to extent, and this extent function actually returns an array of two elements, so we don't need to construct the array ourselves. And this logic we want to apply to the x scale as well as the y scale. See this data dot map doesn't make sense anymore for a scale linear. So I'm going to delete that and paste this logic to compute the extent, but change it to use the y value accessor. And I don't think we imported extent, so I'm going to go back to the top and replace max with extent. And you know, I don't think padding exists on linear scales. That might be the error we're getting here, so I'm going to delete that line. And there we have it. All right, we basically got a scatter plot working. Now we're in a position to do exploratory data analysis by changing what X and Y means. We can do that really easy by just sort of selecting from this list and I can just replace cylinders with say MPG and I get a totally different plot. And we can try maybe weight, you know, if instead of MPG we use weight, this is what it looks like. One problem here is that there's a lot of occlusion, meaning, you know, the circles are sort of on top of each other. We can adjust the radius of the circles. And, you know, I like to tweak things all in one place. So instead of putting this right here, I'm going to make this a new variable. I'm going to call it uh, circle radius. And then up at the top of the file with all the other um, tweakables, we can put radius is 18. Const radius equals 18. Or no, it was circle radius. Yeah, so now we can change it really easily just like that. One neat trick is to change the opacity of the circles. We can do that in styles.css by saying, all right, we've got circles that are steel blue, and we can set the opacity, opacity to be let's say 0 0.5 and that makes them semi-transparent and so now you can see where there's more circles and where there are fewer circles. I'm kinda curious just to change around X and Y and see what we get you know like what's the correspondence between weight and acceleration? It's pretty widespread. How about year and weight? Huh that's kind of interesting. Now we've got the problem that our labels don't correspond to the truth anymore. So we need to update our labels. Let's start by updating the x-axis label. It says population, and where is that in our code? See, it's way down there. I'm going to extract this into a variable too because this is something, you know, 
you might want to tweak a lot. Let's call it x-axis label. And then up at the top of the file, we can say const x-axis label equals, well, it was population, but let's change it to, well, actually, let's move this variable to be next to the x value. So we can easily change these together. So I'll change this to horsepower, give it an uppercase h. And you know, we should really have a y-axis label too. So I'm going to introduce a new variable called y axis label. And this is going to be weight with an uppercase w. Now we need to you know, actually add the y axis label. We can pretty much copy what we've got for our x axis label. And then do it, you know, append something just like this to the y axis group. And the y-axis group, we actually don't have it defined yet, but it's created right here. So we can do the same kind of refactoring we did before. We can say const y-axis g equals g.append g.call y-axis. And we want to separate this logic that removes the domain line uh, to a separate statement. All right, there it is, horsepower. And let me just clean up this code. I'll make it a little more uh, condensed. This label is not at all in the right place. So let's sort of start from scratch again and say, OK, x is 0, y is 0. And really what I'd like is for this to be rotated 90 degrees so that it appears right here in this empty space. We can rotate this label by applying a transform, just like this one here. So I'm going to copy paste that line. And instead of translating, what we want to do is rotate. This is another kind of transform that can happen. And rotate takes a single argument, which is the angle. And I think that's in degrees. So if I pass in 90, yeah, there it is. But I think I wanted to read up. So if I pass in minus 90, yeah, that's pretty close. That's pretty close. And I'm noticing it says horsepower. It should be weight. And so that this x here should be changed to y. There we go. Now it says weight. So we want to get this in the middle vertically and you know in this white space here. So what's happening here? is that I believe it's inheriting the text alignment from the axis because it's part of the axis group. So our x, y is actually right here up at the top. So what we want to do is move the x, y coordinate for this text element to be down in the middle. So this is the inner height. We want to use inner height divided by 2. And with the rotation, it's confusing where should we put that. So I think I'll just try putting it in different places. Yeah, I think what we need is for the x, it should be minus inner height divided by 2. See, that puts it right at the center. But we want the text to be centered vertically with respect to that point. So for that, we can set the style. And I always need to Google this. Yeah, if you Google SVG text align, this is it text anchor. That's exactly what we need. We can set the text anchor to be, I think it's middle. Yeah, there we go. See, now it's actually in the middle. And I wonder, does that work as an attribute? Does it need to be style? Okay, it works as attribute. Let's just use attribute. So we're really close. We just want to move this out to this empty space. And I believe that we can just tweak y. So let's make y like 50. Oh no, that's the wrong way. It needs to be negative. So let's make y, I don't know, minus uh, 80. Pretty close. Minus 100. How about minus 90. That looks good to me. Now we've just got some extra space. So we can just tweak the margin. I'll just change the left margin to be maybe 170, 150. 
there we go. That looks pretty good. The only glaring thing that's wrong is it says top 10 most populous countries. So I'll just scroll down and change that title. And again, I'm going to extract this to a variable. Maybe I'll call it title. And then up at the top, we can say const title equals cars, horsepower versus weight. And we can make this a little bit bigger. So in styles.css, I'm just going to tweak the font size of our title. That's a nice size, but it's going a little bit off the edge. So I got to go back and tweak the margin. I'll just increase the top margin a little bit, maybe 60 pixels. There we go. I'm just going to sort of comb through the code and make sure there's not anything unnecessary. Like this commented out stuff is not really necessary. And we're nicing the X scale, but we're not nicing the Y scale. I think it would be nice if we nice the Y scale. Now we have this nice box. It's nice all around. Oh, but the thing that's not so nice is these intersecting numbers here. We can use another method on axes to address this, and this is called dot tick padding. And if we set tick padding to say 20, you can see what the effect is. See it it spreads it it pushes these numbers away from the axis a little bit. So I'll say, okay, for x this tick padding can be let's say 10. Actually the x tick padding is is the offending thing here. So well, let's make it, I don't know, 15. And just for consistency's sake, let's set also tick padding on the y-axis so that these numbers are not so close to the edge. On the y, let's set it to maybe, I don't know, 5, 10. That looks decent. I'm noticing that this code here this custom tick format that was added for the bar chart, it doesn't really make sense anymore. So I'm just going to delete that and then delete this line that passes it into our tick format. And going down more, um, this is now a little bit close to these numbers. So I'm just going to increase this constant a tiny bit, maybe 93. And this label here, now now that we've moved these numbers down, it's overlapping with these numbers. So down here, for the x-axis label, I'm just going to move that down a tiny bit, too. So we can say maybe 75. All right, that looks good. But now the p is getting cut off. So I think the last, the very last thing I'm going to do here is tweak the bottom margin so that we can see the full p. All right, there we go can see the full P now. And just to make it look super fancy, I'm going to make the fill red. Yeah, isn't that nice? And we can tweak the opacity a little bit just to make it sort of pop a little bit more. And oh, the description is out of date. This description is for the bar chart. So I'm just going to modify that. This scatter plot shows data about cars from UCI Machine Learning Repository, Auto MPG Dataset. All right, we've made a super cool scatter plot. What I'd like you to do is fork this and then change the data and make a scatter plot of some other data. And if you want to visualize um, an ordered attribute, remember you can use scale point. But if you've got two quantitative attributes, this is good, these two linear scales. So, good luck. That's all for making a scatter plot with D3 and SVG. Thanks for watching. Take care.